Beijing now has the best opportunity to attack Russia since Vladivostok is guarded by only two men and a dog. The Telegraph journalist George Allison emphasized that it is easier for Beijing to tear off a larger piece from Russia than from Taiwan. Moscow will not be able to resist strongly since almost all its forces are in Ukraine. Even before February 2022, the Russian armed forces had almost 5,000 artillery mounts, more than 2,000 tanks and 7,000 infantry fighting vehicles. China has almost the same indicators, but it has not fought with anyone and has not lost any of this. The Russian army has up to 550,000 servicemen, but China has up to 1 million. At the same time, we should not forget about the Navy. China is churning out its warships at such a speed that it could arm the entire world. And the new J-20 fighter has shown the large technological gap between Russia and China. There is no point for China to attack the island now since the US will stand up for Taiwan. However, no one will stand up for the Russian Federation. It is in Vladivostok that the headquarters of the Russian Pacific Fleet is located. It is for this reason that Beijing constantly competes with Moscow. Ellison recalled Putin's words when he said that little members of his family speak Chinese fluently. It is possible that the Russian president is thus preparing the future generation for new realities. The first person to suggest Beijing attack the Russian Federation was the president of Taiwan. Recently, Lai Qingtou suggested that China use force to return its lands that Russia had once taken away. Instead of suggesting that China take back land from Russia, Taiwan should focus on Beijing's offer of a peaceful reunification. Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova stated, When asked to comment on Lai's statement, Zakharova said that the opinions of individual fringe politicians who are fixated on revanchism might be of interest to some but not to us. Lai, who is incited by the Americans to make such statements, should understand that they will not bring anything good to him or the people of Taiwan, she stressed. Zakharova reminded Taipei that Russia and China renounced all territorial claims with each other, as is stated in bilateral treaties on cooperation and state borders from 2001 and 2004, as well as in other bilateral documents. Russia has consistently adhered to the One China principle and regards the People's Republic of China government as the sole legitimate government of China, he said. The spokeswoman advised Taiwan's administration to pay more attention to the economic situation on the island and take a constructive approach towards the proposals of the People's Republic of China leadership for a peaceful reunification with mainland China. We are confident that our friends in Beijing have the same stance. She added, 